Here we're going to talk about vectoring by grouping. And what it basically means is we're going to be looking for common things to pull out just like before, but it's going to require a little more work to put everything in the correct form in order to pull the proper thing out. It just means we have to be a little more creative in what we look for that happens to be common among all of the terms. So to kick us all off, I want to start with something that's very, very simple that I know that you all understand. All right. What if I give you the expression x times y <clears throat> plus 2 times y? And I say, factor that. The first thing you do is you say, well, I look for what's common. There's an x, but there's no x there, so that can't be common. Here's a 2, but there's no 2 there, so that can't be common. Oh, look here. There's a y and there's a y. Y is common, so I can do that, right? So what I'll do is I'll then say this is common to both terms, and I will say here's a y, and then I just figure out what needs to go on the inside. So to make this term, y times something makes that term, and that's x, so y times x gives me that, and then y times something to give me this term means this will be a 2. So we've done this kind of factoring all over and over and over again uh, there. Now, I'm just doing that mostly as a review, and now I want to scoot along into what factoring by grouping really is. What if I give you the problem that's very similar to this one? We're going to change one thing. Instead of x times y plus 2 times y, let's do this. Let's say we have x times y minus 3 um, plus 2 times y minus 3. So you notice that this problem is exactly the same as what we just did. Here's the x, here's the 2. Here's the y, here's the y, here's the y, here's the y. Everything's the same, except I've replaced y with the quantity y minus 3. I've replaced this y with the quantity y minus 3. And here is the main idea of factoring by grouping. It doesn't look right now that there's much in common between these terms until you zoom out and look that it's x times something and 2 times something. But what's common to both of them is not a single variable. It's this entire thing, y minus 3, it's common to both of them. So factoring by grouping oftentimes means pulling out large terms that happen to be common to both. So if you think of it, just like we pulled out the y here, I can take and grab the y minus 3, which is common to both terms, and pull it out. To do that, I'll wrap it in parentheses and say y minus 3 gets pulled out. So then I say, all right, got to open up another parentheses. y minus 3 times something gives me this. Times what? Well, it's got to be multiplied times x. Then I have a plus sign, and then y minus 3 has to be, as a quantity, has to be multiplied by something to give me this term, has to be multiplied by 2. So you see, this looks an awful lot like a factored form, right? And this is the final answer. And if you think about it, it makes perfect sense, because what we've done in the past is I've told you to multiply these things. Here's what you do. I said, take the y times this, the y times this. Then take the negative 3 times this, the negative 3 times this. I told you that every term on the outside needs to be multiplied individually and distributed in. That's what we talked about when we talked about what um, distribution really is, what FOIL is, right? But you can also think about it in an alternate way. You can think of this y minus 3 being one big thing that's on the outside. Just like, just like if it were just 4 times x plus 2, the 4 would go in and multiply by each term. But the 4 is not 4, it's an entire term. So it's this times the first term, and also that giant thing times the second term. So that's why they're equivalent to one another. And if you want to blow it out even more, you could do FOIL on this and blow it all out into terms, and you could distribute all this stuff and blow it all out into terms, and you would see that the left and the right-hand sides are equal. So the main idea about factoring by grouping mostly means that you look for things that are common between terms to pull out, but sometimes those things that you pull out can actually be large terms that are common to both kind of like adjacent larger terms there. In this case, it was y minus 3 that was, that was the, uh, the guy that was common. So let's do another one. You'll get the hang of this as we go along. What if we have uh, x times y minus 3? Again, very similar so far to what we have. But then we have plus 2 times 3 minus y. And we say, let's factor this. Well, first you think there's nothing you can do, because x is here. I don't see any x's over there. I have y minus 3, but I, I can look for a y minus 3 over here. I don't see that. And there's no 2 common either. I do see that there's a 3 here, and I do see that there's a y here, but it doesn't look like it's in a form that allows me to, to um, pull it out. Now here's the secret, the secret of algebra, and the secret of all math and physics and chemistry that you're going to learn beyond now. What you've learned up to now is the rules. 
you've learned what is legal to do, right? Now, as you go farther and farther into learning math, what you need to do is use the rules that you have in your brain to do whatever you can to make the thing into the form that allows you to simplify it further. In other words, your problems from here on out are probably not gonna tell you exactly how to simplify a term. But what you know that you can do is you can manipulate any term there using the, the rules of algebra that are, that are known to you, right? To transform it and write it in a way that lets you then do what you want. In other words, it sure would be nice if this was y minus three and this was also y minus three. Because if it were y minus three, it would be exactly the same as this problem and then I could, I could pull this giant term out like I did before. But oh, unfortunately, it's not like that. It's three minus y. So what do you do? You realize that you can change this using the rules of algebra to make it into a y minus three. Then you can then factor it out. How do you do that? Well, you go step by step. The first one we're gonna leave alone. We're not gonna touch him at all because he's already in the form we want. But what would happen is, what would happen if we attempted to pull out inside of here, let's write it as, yeah, let's just write it with parentheses, I guess. What if we pull out a negative one from each of these terms here? Just forget about the rest of the problem. Just focus on this. What if we pull out a negative one from here? Then we'd have a negative one, but we'd have to open up a parentheses. And if we did pull out a negative one, then on the inside, we'd have a negative three. And then this would turn into a positive y. And before your mind explodes, think about what you're doing. All you've said is that this times this has to give me this, positive three, and it does. Negative times negative gives me positive. Negative times this positive, always gives me a negative. So even though it looks a little uncomfortable at first, this entire thing, as ugly as it is, is actually exactly the same as this. In other words, a quick way to flip the order of things when they're added or subtracted is just to factor out a negative one. Because when you factor out a negative one, you're gonna change the sign of everything on, on the inside. And if we change the sign of everything on the inside, in the next step, you're gonna see I'm gonna be able to write this as y minus three, which is gonna match what I have. Now, in order to do that, I had to factor out a negative one, which was some work. Let's get through the problem and then we'll, we'll finish the rest of it and we'll, we'll summarize. What we have is x times y minus three. This negative one's factored out, but it's multiplied by the two. So what you end up having is minus here, two times inside here, negative three plus y. And then in the next step, what you can do is since it's negative three plus y, I can change the order of the addition. That can happen anytime I want, but it'll be y minus three. So you see what I have now. It's not exactly the same as what I've written in, in the beginning, but now I do have a common term, y minus three, and another common term, y minus three. Those two terms can be pulled out as a common factor, just like I've been doing for all the other problems. So if I do that, and I'm gonna pull out as a common factor, y minus three, then you have to pretend for a second, okay, what if this were just something I pulled out? This times something is gonna give me x, but this is what I'm trying to reach, so I'm just gonna have to put an x here. Right, And then there's a minus sign here, so that's gonna go here. This times negative something is gonna give me this. The only thing that works is a two. So you gotta think of it differently than FOIL, F-O-I-L. You gotta think of it as this giant term times the x gives me this. This giant term times negative two gives me this. So this is therefore exactly equivalent to the line above it, and you trace your steps back, which means everything is equivalent to this. Now to totally prove it to yourself, you can multiply all this out, and then you can multiply all this out and you would find that everything's the same. But the trick to math, to trig, to calculus, to physics, to chemistry, to anything is to make sure that between every single step, what you are doing is legal. Then you build a chain all the way to the answer that you know is then bulletproof, right? So we start at the top. We say, well, this is y minus three, this is three minus y. They're pretty close, but they're not quite there. So I wanna change this to make it y minus three. How can I do that? I can't just do it. I can't just change the problem. But what I can do is I can factor out a negative one. That is gonna change the sign of everything inside, which in the next step will allow me to then flip it around to y minus three. But when I pull that negative one out, it has to be multiplied out here. So this becomes actually negative two. So this has a minus sign, whereas the original problem had a plus sign, right? So, but these are exactly equivalent to one another because even though this is now negative, I changed the sign of what was on the inside. So everything is equivalent. Then I take the y minus three, I pull it out, x minus two is what's left over, and that is what factoring by grouping is. It's looking for larger terms than the ones that we've done in the past in order to um, pull out larger terms and simplify problems. 
All right, now let's take a look at another one. This one's actually a little easier than that one. Um, P times Q minus two times Q plus two times P minus four. And I tell you, factor that. Well, the first thing you do, I know you're in a factoring by grouping lesson, so you wanna to try to look for factors that are you know, large factors or whatever. But the very first thing you do, if I tell you just factor something is, you try to look for things that are common to all the terms. So then you say, all right, here's a P, here's a P, there's no P here and there's no P there, so I can't do that. And you say, here's a Q, here's a Q, no Qs here, can't do that. So you're kind of discouraged. Then you say, well, there's a two, there's a two. I could factor a two here, but there's no two here, so I can't do that. And you look at four and you can't do that. So you think you're stuck. But then you realize sometimes math is about zooming into smaller parts of the problem and trying to factor smaller little things just to simplify it a little bit. So instead of trying to factor the entire expression, I only want you right now to focus on the first two terms. Forget about this stuff. Factor these first. Well, there's a Q here and a Q here. So I could pull a Q out of just those two terms. And this times something here would be P to multiply to give me PQ. And then here would be minus two because I'm trying to get negative two uh, Q there, negative two times Q. So you multiply this into both places, you recover those first two terms. Now, what you have over here is still exactly what you started with. That doesn't go away. I hope you agree that going from this line to this line are equal to one another. All I've done is factor out a term from the first two, right? And then these just come along for the ride. They're still added, they just haven't, I haven't done anything with them. But I factored out a Q from the first two terms. And then I look at the second two terms and I say, wait a minute, I can just focus on those and I see a common factor here. I could pull out a two from here and from here. So let me rewrite the problem. Q times P minus two, that stays the same, but I'm gonna factor out a two from here and if I do that, I need to have a P on the inside here and a minus two on the inside there. Two times P is this, two times negative two is this. So this is the factored form. And then you're about to circle your answer and you're saying, well, I did pretty well. But then you realize, wait a minute, there's a quantity P minus two here and the exact same quantity P minus two here. So actually I can pull out this entire large term called P minus two but then I have to figure out what goes in here to give me multiplied to give me this. Well, just a single Q multiplied by that would give me that. And then plus sign because of this, two here. So then this times this quantity would give me this. This large thing times this quantity would give me this. This is the final factored form. I don't care who you are, unless you are a genius, super algebra, crazy, awesome person. You are never, ever, ever going to be able to look at this problem and understand like that, that it's gonna factor into this. I can't do it. I don't know anybody that can do it. Unless you're just really, really good at seeing patterns. And that's fine, maybe you are, that's great. For the rest of us, you have to take it step by step. When I do this step of the problem, I have no idea that it's gonna come out to this. But I do know that I can factor out the Q from the both from the first thing here. Then I looked at the last two terms and said I can factor out a two. Right around here is when I realized, wait a minute, these are gonna actually match. Then I can use factoring by grouping to do the final part of the answer. P minus two, Q plus two, final answer. All right, one more problem. This one's a little challenging, but it's not that bad, really. We have four terms. We have A times B minus two. We have minus two B plus A. And I just tell you something general, factor this expression. First thing you do is you look for commonality among everything. I have an A, B, there's no A, B here, so I can't pull out an A, B immediately from all terms because I don't even have a B here and I don't even have an A here. I don't have an A here either. Same thing with the numbers, there's nothing common here. So then you start doing the same sort of thing. You start saying, what can I pull out from different, um, from different places, right? And in this case, I'm looking at these first two terms like we did before, we kind of zoom in on the first two terms, but there's nothing common here. Then you look at these last two terms and you realize there's nothing in common there. And then you start to really get panicked because you don't see anything. But then you realize when things are added or subtracted, you can actually rearrange the order of addition and subtraction all you want because one plus two plus three is the same as three plus two plus one. So I can arrange them any way I want. And in this case, I'm just gonna play around with it. I'm gonna say, well, what if I just change it to AB and then this two B, I'll just move it next door. I still have the minus two and I still have the plus A. All I've done is take this and move it, whoops, I forgot something critical, B. I just take this and move it next to the AB, the minus two just gets moved close to the A, but they're all gonna, it's equivalent to one another because they're, you know, 
addition works that way. And then what I'll do is I'll say, well, let's focus only again on the first two terms. I have a common B. So I can take that out. A minus two is what I'm gonna get. How do I know that? Because B times A gives me this, B times negative two gives me this. These terms have been written down directly. I haven't even done anything with them at all. So then I say, gee, this looks pretty good, but I think I'm done. I don't really know what else I can do. This is A minus two and this is negative two uh, plus A. This looks kind of similar, but it's not the same. I can't grab these terms and pull them out because A minus two would need to match A minus two um, exactly over there. But then you realize, well, wait a minute here. Negative two plus A is exactly the same thing as plus A minus two, right? When you think about it, when I flip this around, it's just subtracting two, adding A, which is the same as adding A and subtracting two. So to make it a little more clear, I can write it like this, B, A minus two, plus, I can just put parentheses, A minus two. That's fine, just to help you visualize the grouping. So now you can see it a little more clearly, right? This is a common term, this is a common term. So then I'm gonna factor out the common term, which is just simply a minus two. Then it would need to be multiplied by something to give me this, which is just gonna be, be b. And then it would need to be multiplied by something to give me the same thing here, which means it needs to be multiplied by one. So it's a minus two times b plus one. And if you absolutely wanna just check yourself and make sure it's right, that's no problem, you can do that. a times b, is AB, A times one is A, negative two times B is negative two B, negative two times one is negative two. AB, the minus two is at the end here, the negative two B is here, and the plus A is here. So they're out of order, but they're exactly the same as what we started with. So this is the factor form. All right, that's factoring by grouping. Basically, you might have to rearrange terms, you might have to manipulate things, factor things out a little bit, but ultimately you're looking for larger subsets of things that you can then pull out, right? That you can then pull out. We have a few more special cases of factoring before we get to the general case of factoring general trinomials. And um, you know, it's just gonna be an incremental step-by-step -step type of deal where we build our skills. But ultimately what we're gonna do is learn how to factor all these kinds of expressions so that we can then solve equations that contain these kinds of expressions. That's why we're doing it. We're gonna eventually have equations that'll look like this equals something and you'll need to factor it in order to be able to find the solution. That's why we're doing this. So practice your skills here, follow me on to the next lesson. We'll continue working on this right now. Learn anything at mathandscience.com.